Hello, it's Friday. It's uh, Easter Friday, <laughs> funnily enough. Good Friday. Happy Good Friday, everybody. Um, I've just been for a walk with the dog. I'm a bit sweaty and hot. Hey-ho. I'm hot anyway. <laughs> uh, I've got my T-shirt on, my happy hippie soul T-shirt on today. And we're going to be doing some lengthening today. So we're going to lengthen the front of the body. Um, I'm boss eyed with these glasses on. <laughs> so we're going to be lengthening the front of the body and um, hello Fiona, yay the Friday crowd starting, <laughs> the Friday girls. Uh, so we are going to be doing some red light reflex uh, front of the body lengthening, getting into the chest, lengthening the shoulder, uh, lengthening the chest to get the shoulders back. We're going to be lengthening through the hips, some uh, hip flexor work. Happy Easter, Fiona, and anybody else that's watching. <laughs> I can see your messages. I can't really see them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yes, so we're going to do um, some leg lengthening, some sending the legs to the bottom of the mat. We're going to be doing, um, what else are we going to do? Some arm lifts above our heads. Um, what else was I going to do? Oh, it will come to me. I'll show you in the minute. minute. I'll show you the moves and we'll um, get started. Uh, just remembering that this video is going on YouTube, so I'll load it up afterwards. I think I loaded it up yesterday, so I haven't checked, but it kind of takes a while and I come back to it and sometimes I forget. So I'll, so I'll hopefully, um, I'll, there'll be two videos one from yesterday and one from today. I'm trying to do different things every day. This might be a little bit similar to Tuesdays, so not fully. Might be, I'm not sure. Um, so, but that's all right, isn't it? Because we, you know, you get a, a little preamble ramble at the start that's different. And we're going to, um, yeah, so I'm going to show you those now. Well, I, my brain's all over the place. It's, it's, I've literally just come back from a dog walk. Hi, Laura Smith-Jones. <laughs> Hello, Carrie in. <laughs> Yay, people in. There's a fourth person. I don't know who you are, but if you're there, say hello. So I'm going to show you the moves that we're going to be do, doing today so that you know what you're getting. Tina, yay. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I'm taking it that you're either joining in or you're just having a little check-in and you, you see what I'm doing and then maybe do it another day. Um, if you are staying, great. It's about 45 minutes. It might go over. It usually does. I can't quite keep get my timings right, can I? We know that from my classes. Anyway, so let's uh, have a little look at what we're doing. We are going to, as ever, arch and curl. And I'll just put my hands on. Who's that popping up? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the um, thingies because they get in the way of me seeing what you're seeing. So I can't see whether you can see me properly. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way. I'm gonna roll onto my back. And then I'm nice and warm so I can do that. That's <laughs> the dog walk. So we're gonna be arch and curling, usual arch and curl, tilting the pelvis forward, arch in the back, and then curling pelvis towards the belly button. Just watch, the bottom lifts up a little bit, don't push into the feet. Uh, we're going to do that for a while, we're going to go into our flower because that really opens the front of our body, we'll work into that slowly. We're going to do uh, elbows over the body, like we did on Tuesday, but you can change that if you've got shoulder issues and hug yourself, you just do it gently and that comes within the arch and curl, so you'd arch and curl, squeezing in and out and then we're going to bring the knee up, so the knee is going to come to right shoulder. Uh, right uh, knee to right shoulder, left knee to left shoulder. We're going to do that within an arch and curl. And we're going to turn that into our leg lengthening. So we'll lengthen that away. And we'll do it like this. I should be doing it with the other leg really, shouldn't I? So you can see what I'm doing. So we'll lengthen our leg away. I'm going to try really hard. I'm, my mat's getting in the way not to lift the foot up until we've got near the bottom and not to start um, taking the leg down until we start, up, start to arch. Just be mindful of that, you're not bringing the foot up until you've got past neutral and come up and started to curl. So we're going to be doing that. Uh, we're going to go into our <coughs> arms above the chest like this. And then we're going to do some hip work into the groin, which is our knee to opposite toe again. And then our sending the knee forward of the opposite knee. So we start uh, working with the hip flexors. So we'll be doing this move. I'm going to talk you through all this. I just want you to get a bit of a visual before we start. So you, 
um, can see because there might be people on here who have never done this before just want to watch for a little while and see what's going on so I'm just showing you how my hand we won't have our hands on unless you need your hands on I'm just showing you the difference it's just the knee gliding forward and back so we're going to do that um, we're going to go on to our side and do our uh, elbow uh, our little fish tail again we did it on Tuesday I think do our little fish tail because that really plays into the chest muscles but then we start getting a twist as well so we get a diagonal twist that plays in so this is a great little move and then we start tightening by bringing the feet up and then letting go okay so we're going to this and then we're very likely going to finish with the wash rag we might go on to our fronts if we go on to our fronts it will be our lifting up move where we have our forehead on the floor and we lift it up so we'll do that one again play into the chest and then play into the legs but i'm going to keep my arms down if you need to you might have your hands here might be too much to have your arms by your side um, so we're going to do possibly do that I'll see we'll see how what, what time we've got and how it's going um, but that's kind of playing into the red light reflex if you don't know anything about the red light reflex then have a look at the posts on my page where I talk about them you go to YouTube there's more old videos on there of me talking about the red light reflex um, and I probably will do a video at some point breaking all those down again about the red light green light trauma reflex but just know today we're working on the red light reflex where we we have rounded in shoulders tight hips from sitting or other things knee problems from having tight quad muscles um yeah and calf muscles that are tight and ankle problems so this plays into a lot of kind of areas that would end up with you looking like a little little old person on a zimmer frame eventually um, okay, so what time is it? Any questions? Let me see if I slide that back. Okay, so, uh, oh, hello, Gwen. Um, Gwen, if you're joining in, you want to join in, that, that'd be great, but just make sure you kind of do everything very carefully, gently, in a pain-free way. Stop if you need to. Maybe watch this video, maybe go and look at some other ones if you've not done this before. But I would recommend it. It's great. It's really good for um, mobility, for movement, for, for say, say in supple, for quicker body uh, reflexes. Um, yes, so all those things, wonderful things. If anybody else wants to write a comment and tell, tell Gwen what it's good for, then you can. <laughs> um, so in a couple of minutes, we'll start. And this, I love, when I look back at these videos, it's great because people have been coming and going. It's got out to quite a big reach, which is fantastic. Um, we'll get the whole world doing somatics, won't we, everybody that loves it? <laughs> anyway, so um, I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all having a lovely Easter. I hope you're going to have a, uh, a good weekend and not stray too far from your homes. hope you've all got somewhere to go um, that keeps you safe and everybody else. And um, I, I'm just sending you lots of love around this time because it's just, for some people, it's just awful, isn't it? I'm, I don't mind it. Don't mind it too much. I'm a bit of an introvert, so I'm quite happy to do writing and stay inside. And Fred seems to be happy at this time, so hey ho, got a garden, which always helps, doesn't it? Hi, Sarah. So we'll get to it. We'll do our lovely front of the body lengthening. I'm going to feel gorgeous later. We're going to feel raring to go. We're going to feel so supple and movable um, and wonderful that we're just going to have a lovely time um, celebrating Easter, catching up with friends online, etc., etc. Eating Easter eggs. Not for me at the moment, you can see I'm getting, oh, oh dear, hey ho. Anyway, I'm going to get rid of the comments so I can look over occasionally and see what I'm doing, see if people can see what I'm doing and let's go. <laughs> so let's scan, let's lie ourselves down, <sighs> soften into the floor, let go, this is the best bit isn't it, I'm going to take my glasses off, soften into the floor, sink in. Oh, it's nice. And the point of this is to make sure we start connecting with our body. We go inside, we close our eyes, we make sure we're comfortable, and then we look at what's going on. So today we're targeting the front of the body, so let's scan the front of the body. Let's start at the head, change it up a bit. <laughs> start at the head, right at the top, and then travel down the front. So you're looking at both sides as you go. Just focus on the front. It's harder because we haven't got the, the feel of the floor underneath us. So you're kind of having to visualise and feel sensations. 
Just traveling down, check out your neck. Hopefully your neck will feel a lot longer, especially have a look around the chest because and into the arms, because this is the area we're gonna try and release quite a bit today. Lengthen, retrain those muscles that they don't have to round forward from sitting or from getting older. Travel down the abdomen, notice how you're breathing, how much space you've got, what's going on when you breathe, what bits are moving. Any tightness. Travel down through the abdomen, into the lower part of the torso, around the waist, across the front of the pelvis, the abdomen, the belly. Down into the groin, the pubic bone. Have a look around that whole area. There's a lot of connections into the front of the pelvis from the thigh, from the side of the thighs. Your quad muscles, the big ones in the throat, get tight when we, we have red light issues, red light reflex issues, which causes problems, tightness in the knees. I've needed a lot of quad muscles to release the front of the knees where they're tight in here. And then check out your knees and your calves, down the front of your calves. Check out the back of your calves. There's not many muscles in the front of the calves, so check out the back as well. And then into the feet. Have a look at what your ankles are doing. The feelings around the back of the ankle, the front of the ankle, and into the feet. And obviously we're not going to forget about the back of the body, so have a quick scan up, do a little whiz up the back. Checking out each joint as you go, feel your bottom, into your waist, your back, your lower back. We're playing into the lower back a lot at the start, so make sure you've got an idea of how it feels. Up in between the shoulder blades, because they're going to have to start softening as well, join in to let the front go. Up into the head, back of the neck, shoulders. And just have a little quick check out the arms. Red light plays into the front of the arms which can often cause pain in the back of the arms. A lot of the red light reflex tightness in the front causes problems in the back. So you may not realise that it's the muscles in the front that are causing all your issues in the back. So know that when we're doing this, that that's going to help you release back, back issues by doing the front of the body. It's very important. So we're going to bring our knees up. Slide one knee out to the side, bring the second knee up. And then adjust yourself so you're comfortable. <sighs> Lengthen your neck. Pull your trousers up like me if you need to. <laughs> Tuck yourself in. Make sure your feet are hip width apart. Check that they're next to each other. Line them up. Slide the feet across. Maybe just feel your bunions touching. Bring them back again. Of course you haven't got any bunions. Just move. And we start breathing. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Slow it all down. Let's get our sympathetic nervous system working, slowing down, ready for signals, ready for information, not worrying about the coronavirus, not worrying about anything to do with it, just slowing everything down. And that's the, the other advantage of doing this, isn't it? Is this slow everything down, not be so reactive. Breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, slow the out breath down, start following the breath through the body Breathing down into the abdomen, start softening that area. If we don't breathe down, let go of our abdomen, we don't get enough oxygen into the lungs. We do chest breathing, which isn't good when we speed up and we're rushing around. Makes us feel anxious. As soon as you feel the breath getting down into your pelvis, then start thinking about arching. Gently arching the pelvis as you breathe in. Breathing out, coming down. And I'm gonna let you, new people to this, maybe you're watching this or maybe you're just getting involved with this and you're just thinking about this, this is the bowl of water on the front of your pelvis tilting forward as you arch the back gently. And water will just spill down between your knees, down to your toes, in that direction. So we're just doing a line forward from our belly button, belly button's lifting up, back's arching, pelvis tilting forward. We're not pushing into the feet, we're just using the lower back muscles. Mine are nice and soft from yesterday after doing last night's class. That's good, isn't it? Normally I have to really think about this for a while, but they're happy as Larry. That's three classes this week. Bring the shoulders in when you feel ready. Some of you might not, you might just be concentrating on the 
pelvic movement. But if you want to, start pressing the shoulders in, arms down by your side. I'm just putting my hands on my belly if you're watching just to emphasize the tilt, the movement. And then if you feel ready, so we're gonna go quite quickly into this, but it might be in a small way. You might be doing this in a very tiny way. We're gonna start curling the pelvis. That's only if your back's okay, you're not pushing into any pain. Curl of the pelvis is just tilting the pelvis up as you breathe it out, flattening the stomach, feeling the abdominal muscles in the lower abdomen squeezing together. You might feel it in the upper abdomen, you might feel that more when we bring the shoulders forward. And just arch and curling. So we're using a whole body arch and curl very gently. If you join in with my classes all week, this will feel amazing. We're doing the same next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, lunchtime. So if you can get those videos in, then this is going to be smooth sailing on a Friday lunchtime. So we're just beginning to do a whole body arch and curl. So breathing out, shoulders come forward, pelvis tilts up, bottom comes off the floor gently. Make sure you've got full control, nothing's bouncing, nothing's shaking. Close your eyes, feel into it. And if your arms start moving, great. If they want to start rotating, make the rotation come from the shoulders, not the wrists. So that'll be your upper arm moving and your lower arm joining in. You can move the wrist, but we don't want to make the movement start at the wrist. We want it to start into the shoulders. So we're just doing a full body arch and curl very gently. I might do it in a really big way. If you're watching, this is me doing it really tightly. And then completely opening the other way. So that's very strong for some people. So some of you might be working in a really minute, tiny way, watching your lower back muscles, watching your belly muscles. So once you're getting into it, you've got the rhythm, start noticing how your abdomen feels, how your chest muscles feel, the rib cage, your neck, around the groin, the front of the pelvis. Remember, we, we, we're making the front of our body our focus even though the back muscles are helping us to lengthen by tightening. And thus when they're lengthening, they're getting the benefits of us tightening into the front of our body. We just want to get some good control over the front of the body before it releases into an arch. So we want to watch everything that's happening. So we're going to start rolling the arms in gently if that's what you're up able to do. So just roll them in at the chest towards the body and then open them out. My arms are quite far away from my body. Some of you might, because your chest tight, might have your arms very close to the body. They might roll into the side of the body or slightly up the body. That's okay. I'm not going to slide my arms away from the position they're in really. And you don't need to change your arm position. Just play into wherever your arms have started. Now my arch and curl has gotten quite big, so it's actually working into my neck as well. So I'm gonna have that awareness. It's harder to do when you're talking. You might be thinking, shut up talking then. <laughs> but I want to keep your attention. I want to keep you involved in this. So I'll sacrifice my, uh, <laughs> my, uh, my being involved in my body <laughs> so that you get the benefits. So we're going to think about bringing the knees in. Some of you might want to do that in a tiny way. Some of you might be thinking, great, I can do that in a quite an open way. All that involves is as your arms rotate open and you go into an arch, your knees slightly come apart in the first instant, making sure that doesn't cause a problem in your back, in your bottom, the side of your hips, side of your legs, your inner thigh, your groin. And they might touch together as you curl. So as you breathe out, your knees will come together, your arms will roll towards the body or into the chest. So we're going to turn this into a flower. So that's all that's involved in this. The flower is the knees opening, the arms opening within an arch and curl. So you can go into that as much as you want to. Some of you I know will be opening really widely. Some of you will be just thinking about maybe one shoulder or one hip and watching that. Some of you might forget about the breath for a little while, that's all right, as long as you're getting to grips with the areas that are sore. 
and you're not pushing into any pain. Remember, you don't need to push into any pain. If you've got pain somewhere, you can't really do a lot about that other than maybe put a pillow under the area or, or, um, or make it much smaller in the movement, much smaller and much slower till you get some control back. You're re remember, you're retraining your muscles and you can only do that by doing it really slowly. Think about playing the piano, do repetition over and over again, do everything slowly till it all starts coming together and the brain gets that information stored away. So all it is, repetition is with everything we learn. And the muscles are relearning how to come out of a shortened pattern. So I'm gonna start bringing my hands in. So I'm gonna open my hands as I um, arch and then I'm gonna squeeze them a little bit because I want to get my arms involved as well as I rotate my arms into my chest. So I'm really thinking about opening the front of the body through to the hands. If you want to, you could play into this in the feet. We don't really do this in class, but you could. I'm just doing some very wide because I can, I've done this Tuesday, I don't think I would have been able to open very wide, but I'm opening quite wide and I've got control and nothing's hurting, so that's great. My right hip would have, wouldn't have been able to do this on Tuesday. But now because I've done three classes, four classes now, then my right hip's not complaining at all. And on my left shoulder, which wasn't very happy. So that's good. So we're gonna just play into this for about a minute more. This is one of the best ones you could do for opening the front of the body. It goes into the psoas muscle within the inner thigh, into the lower back. Gives that lots of lengthening. It opens and closes at the chest. Into all the pectoral muscles, all the muscles in the shoulder blades. The rotator cuff muscles. If you watch from neck, it, it plays into the neck muscles around the lower part of the neck and into the upper back, into the chest. It's just kind of do all this one, as long as you build into it slowly and gently. Have some awareness of your abdominal muscles lengthening from the rib cage. So we're gonna do about four more of these. Four, one each way. And then we're going to think about letting go. And when we let go, we bring our legs down gently and we do a couple of breaths. So I'm on my last one. Some of you might have stopped already. Try not to spend too long just lying there doing nothing in between everything, waiting for me to catch up with you. <laughs> do some bum squeezes, if nothing else. So, Resting your legs down, softening into the floor, letting go. Couple of breaths doing absolutely nothing. Just slow breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, thinking about nothing. Everything's soft and, soft and relaxed. Use the word soft if you want to tell muscles that are hanging on to let go. So we're going to come back up. We're going to bring our knees up again. We'll come back to that position, the crooked position, and we're going to bring our elbows out to the side, fingertips by our ears. And uh, those people that want to lift up when they're doing this, lift up. If you're new to it, don't lift up. Just think about your elbows and opening your chest. Now, my elbows are on the floor. It might be that your elbows are up in the air to start in this position, or it might be that you're just wrapping your arms around your body and then opening your arms. So we're arch and curling. And as we open, uh, sorry, as we arch, we open our elbows. Fingertips stay by the head, by the temples, by the ears, wherever they're comfortable. You don't fix the palms to the head. And then as we arch, we open. As we breathe out and curl, we bring the elbows together. Just be mindful of your upper back to start with. And be, be wherever your chest opening to start with. And the connection into your arms. If you've got issues with your in the red light position, then your arms, the back of your arms might not be very comfortable in this. So 
because they're being asked to lengthen them and they don't want to anymore. And remember, if you can't do that, just hug yourself across the chest as you um, curl and then just bring the back of the arms down onto the floor, whatever angle is comfortable gently. You can let your forearms flop about in the air a little bit. <laughs> and then squeezes. We're squeezing into the chest muscles, we're squeezing into the abdomen, we're keeping everything controlled and slow, pressing the shoulders back. Keep the neck soft. If you want to lift up in this position, and as you arch and bring the elbows together, tuck your chin in very gently and lift up off the floor. Come down gently, make sure your head's back on the floor before you release the chin, and then open the arms. So some of you might feel strong enough. Don't drag your head up into the air though with, a, with your chin up in the air, make sure it's tucked in. Not fully tucked in, you don't want to squeeze, you don't want to frighten the back of your neck. It's just aiming forward as you come up. Now I've got a slightly bouncy left chest muscle as my elbow opens. So I'm going to watch that that I don't open it as far as the other side in the first instant. So once I've got my check so no, check chin sorted out, if I'm lifting up, then I'm just going to watch my left arm. I might just come back to the floor, not lift up. It's up to you to change how this feels. If you're starting to get elbow pain, I've got a bit of tennis elbow at the moment from the dog lead and from my original cat bowl <laughs> incident. Um, so I'm just watching that tennis elbow, how it feels in this position. So I might go down into the hug position just to make sure I get a little bit of length through that arm. It's not bent all the time. Just to give my a little bit of soreness in my elbow, a bit of a break. But you're still squeezing, and the point of this is to open the chest horizontally, open the shoulder blades in between the back, get some of the connections in the chest moving. So we're just gonna do a few more rounds of this, whichever position you're in. Still arch and curling, hopefully your pelvis is just kind of taking care of itself as you concentrate up into the chest. Keep your jaw soft, go back to your breathing. Going to do three or four more rounds of this. Bring your arms down if you need to, don't need to carry on as long as me. If it gets too much. Some of you might not have been exercising for ages. It's still exercise, it's still strengthening, it's still um, re a repetitive action that involves um, muscle tightening and lengthening. So it's still gonna, still gonna wear out at some point. <laughs> you don't have to keep going. So we're going to rest our arms down, lengthen our legs down, feel into the chest, just see how we're feeling, and then breathe gently. A couple of breaths doing nothing. Doesn't have to be a couple if, you're, if you've got plenty of time. You can have five, six breaths. You should just be lying there for a bit till you feel ready to do the next move, bit of recovery. We just do two just to make sure we've had that time in class and then we can move on to the next one. So we're going to start thinking about bringing our knee up. Now you can do this with your arms by your side in the flower, arm rotating in position if you want to, if it's too much to have your shoulders up, or you can go back to the arms across the chest with the bent elbows in the arch and curl, or you could do the hug, it's up to you. Some of you might lift up to meet the, meet, meet the knee, I know there's a couple of you out there that will do that straight away. So all we're gonna do is arch and curl, bring the elbows in, and then we'll, ch oh, we'll, let's go with the right knee. Let's go with the right knee. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? You're not, <laughs> I can't see what you're doing. I don't need to watch you all at the same time, so it doesn't matter. So choose a leg. <laughs> and then very gently start thinking about bringing the knee up as you curl. So you might want to slow it down in the first instant to see how it feels. Think about lowering it down gently and then arch We're not going to lengthen the foot down to the bottom yet, we're just going to investigate our hip flexors. So mine didn't like this on Tuesday, but they're much happier today, so that's good. All the hip work I did yesterday in yesterday's class. So we're putting our foot down and we're going back to a centre arch. And we're just arching as usual, 
The only difference is our knees coming off the floor as we go into a curl. So feel how that front of the body releases as you tightened into it and it releases as you arch. You might feel the pelvis tilts forward a little bit more on that side as it's starting to release in the abdomen. If it's too strong for your hip flexors, if it's too strong to lift the knee up, just maybe go up onto the heel or go up onto the toes as you curl, slide your foot a bit nearer to the body. Actually, that's not, that's not for too brilliant. Maybe go, just go up onto your heel and you'll feel a tightness happening through the front of your quad muscles. That might be just a change for you to modify this a little bit. Just take that foot up onto the heel and you'll feel things engage in the front of the thigh. That might be enough if you don't want to lift up. So we're going to start lengthening the leg down. So you can bring the knee up, you might be lifting the body up, tuck the chin in, remember, same thing as earlier. And then as you put the foot down, as you come to neutral, before you start arching, then lengthening the leg away. You might not go full length to the bottom of the mat, you might and arch gently at the same time. You slide the foot back up till it gets near to your bottom, you've got a neutral spine, and then you lift the knee up again like we have been doing. So you might want to investigate that without lifting the upper body for a little while. Some of you may not even go into this. You might just lengthen the groin a little bit. You might not lengthen the leg all the way down. There might be too many things for you to control, and it might be that it's just too much for different parts of your body. So you're just gonna modify it to however suits you, which is smaller movements, not lifting up so high, flexing at the foot rather than lifting the knee up, just lengthening the groin a little bit, maybe getting a 45 degree angle in the knee. That might be enough when you arch. So we're still trying to keep the integrity of that arch going forward, both sides of the pelvis going forward till the legs long then you'll probably find it tilts over onto the right a bit more. Slow it down, look at it, look at what's happening, break it up into parts. It doesn't have to be completely fluid all the time. You might need to change the breath a little bit and just do a couple of rounds of breathing within the length of that movement. Breathe into the belly, see how the back arches, give yourself time, there's no rush. We're going to do a couple more of these on this right leg of mine, <laughs> it might be your left leg. And when you've done your last one, so I'm going to let my leg down, I'm going to leave that leg there. I'm going to bring my arms out, then we'll take my other knee down, soften into the floor, let go. Just have a little look at that leg. Mine feels about two inches longer than the other side now. A couple of breaths doing nothing. And then we're going to gently bring those knees up again. I'm going to adjust my trousers <laughs> and then we're going to go into the opposite leg. So start again, maybe you need to change your arm position, maybe you want to do it with your arms by your side this time, that might have been enough chest opening with the arms up and then we're going to bring the knee up and down again on this side. So just take your time, build into it, check out which arm position is best for you before you start bringing the knee up. Remember, if it's too much in the hip flexors at the front, that's between the abdomen and the thigh, then you could just lift your heel, feel that engage in the front of the quad muscles as you arch, uh, as you curl. And once you've had a good few rounds of investigating how that feels, then you can start thinking about lengthening the leg down. Remember any bouncing, ratcheting is telling you that the muscle's not really getting the message. 
it's not ready, you've gone too quickly, you're too fast for it, and you need to slow down and make the move smaller. Try and drag the foot up, don't take it through the air because that will switch other muscles on in the back of the abdomen and the groin. We don't want to, we're trying to lengthen them, not to make them switch on to hold us. I'm having to lift my foot up a little bit because my mat is <laughs> going off the end of the mat. Try not to bring your knee up when you've got an arched spine. That's just going to really play into problems and make you feel uncomfortable, hurt your back. Hurt your groin. Put your foot down near bottom, slide it away. So we're going to do three or four more. So if you haven't started lengthening your leg away to whatever degree you're taking it, then do a few rounds like that. Come back to the breath. Maybe a little check in with your neck that it's all right. Probably won't move as much if your um, elbows are out to the side. Check that the jaw's soft. I'm making this my last two. And then I'm gonna let go. Bring my arms down, leave that leg long, slide the other one down, let go. Soften into the floor, do nothing. Check out whether that leg's equaled up. <laughs> might have caught up with the other side, might have, gone, might have gone past the other side. Maybe notice whether your pelvis is tilting either side, anything softened around the bottom, the back. So the last thing we're going to do within the arch and curl is long arms. So I'm going to bring our legs up. I'm going to make sure I've got some space behind me. <laughs> so feet hip width apart, crooked position. Bring your arms up above your chest, sink your shoulders down into the floor. Arms are parallel up in the air and palms are facing your knees. Then we're going to arch and curl. Take the arms back behind us gently. On the curl, we bring the arms forward and they may stay up in the air, just moving kind of 30 degrees forward and back. Close to your ears, or they may touch down to the floor at the front as you curl. They may touch behind you as, they, as you arch. They may not. If they're not because your shoulders are in the way, then you could slide your shoulder blades down your back. If they're not because of tightness in the chest, then be aware of that tightness in the chest and don't go too far. So I've tucked my shoulder blades down under my back and now I can lengthen my arms a bit longer behind me because I haven't got particularly tight chest muscles, especially on my left side on this, in this movement. I have to watch the right side a little bit. Breathe in as you take the arms back, breathe out as you come forward. Keep it nice and soft. This pulls your rib cage up, so be mindful of that. It might be a bit too strong in the abdomen if you're over arching or over curling. So I know I've got some fascia tucked up under my right rib. Fascia is the netting, the white netting, the little tubes that run around the body and stick everything together, hold you all in. And I've got a bit of a build up of that where it's Somewhere along the line, I've had some damage under my right rib cage. So I can feel that in this move. I can feel that there was a restriction there. So I'm just gonna be very mindful of that, that I'm not forcing it into a stretch. So you might have restrictions like that, that you know of, you might not know it's fascia. You might find out one day that it is. Then 
just be aware of any restrictions that feel tight, feel sore, you've always been aware of them. You know that it's not muscle. Some part of you will be saying, that's not, I don't think that's muscle. So at one where you go, I don't think that is that. And you don't know what it is and you don't want, know what to put a name on it. You might call it scar tissue. It's not always scar tissue, that's usually in the muscle. So my arms are getting longer and longer, more able to go back and touch the floor behind me. Yours might not, like might, might just be going past the ears, but they might just be going a little bit further each time, possibly, if, as long as you're not in any pain, you've got no numbness or tingling in your fingers, please. Bend the elbows a little bit if you need to. Bring your arms down if you need to. So some of you at home might coordinate this with a lengthening of the leg. So I'm just going to do it with my right leg. Some of you might want to do that. Some of you might want not want to do that at all. You might um, you might think, no, I'm not going to investigate. That's too strong. So I'm just incorporating the right leg lengthening as the arms go back. I'm not bringing the knee up. That might be a little bit too intense at the moment. You could do that. Some of you might investigate that. I'm not watching you. So if you want to try it, <laughs> then you can. I've done quite a lot of knee lifting, so it might be enough really. But lengthening the leg away, because we are working on the front, you might find that that's quite a nice lengthening, like you're being lengthened on the rack. So I'm gonna make this the last one on my right leg. I'm just, in, I'm just doing a little bit of lengthening on the right leg, and I'm just gonna do about four on the left, just to investigate how that feels. Just how it feels to lengthen right up from my sh shoulder girdle down into the groin, down to my knee. Some of you it might be enough to just focus on the arms and the chest opening and being aware of the neck and the shoulder blades sliding down your back. That might be enough without bringing the leg in. So I'm going to do one more on my left leg, my arm's still moving, and then I'm going to bring my arms down and rest. Some of you might be already resting, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to make sure you listen to the body, that's all the point of this. Get back in touch with the body, keep everything under your control so your brain's not scared, doesn't start panicking, doesn't rev up your symp sympathetic nervous system and make everything hang on for dear life tightening. So what we're going to do is, I've got plenty of time, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to come over onto our sides gently after our little rest. And we're going to lie on our sides. Pillow if you've got one. I think I might use a pillow today. Let's reach for my pillow. My little... There we go. Have a little pillow. You have a pillow, you don't need a pillow. You can have just a jumper or something if you haven't got anything to hand. Tuck your fingers round your arms. We're gonna go back to our chest opening without our arch and curl. So we're just gonna leave our lower arm on the floor, open our chest. Your knees are at nine, uh, 45 to 90 degrees to the front of the body. We're gonna leave them there. They're not gonna open. Actually, I'm not gonna have a pillow. Don't like a pillow. Get rid of my pillow. <laughs> Feels easier to do it without a pillow. Leave your lower arm where it is and just open the chest by following your um, elbow, going back behind you, looking over towards it. So involve the neck gently. Elbow comes back over, you might roll onto that lower hand if you haven't got a pillow. Elbows touch together as much as they can. They may, they may not, they may, you may not come that far forward. And then start, once you've had a look at this chest opening and noticing how it feels in the back, how it feels to engage the back to take that elbow open and open the chest up without stretching. It's quite a strong position to be in. Then you can start feeling in the waist. So take your focus down to the waist and across the abdomen into the lower back and make sure nothing untoward is happening down there. Make sure that you've got no pain. If you have done open so wide, no pain, no pushing into the sacrum, no pushing into the pelvis. If your lower shoulder hurts to do this, then 
you make sure that that is your marker that you don't open and close any further than that lower shoulder can cope with you might need a pillow on your head if it's a real problem and then think about the breath breathing in as you go back breathing out as you come forward eventually when you start letting go your lower your elbow might go further forward of the lower elbow you might start taking it diagonally up behind you as you open to lift to the side a little bit more might do it in a nice slow way to see if you unravel a little bit without it being a stretch because it might soften as you go into it. Stretch is more you kind of you forcing something to, to happen. So the minute you feel res res resistance, restriction, pain, you don't go any further. Either way. So we're just gently, rhythmically opening and closing our elbows. Slowing it down, breathing out as we come forward. And then when we're ready, we're gonna bring our feet up. So all that happens is, as you breathe out, bring the elbow forward. As it comes past your side, over the top of your ear, the elbow, then you lift the feet gently, keep the knees together. Knees stay on the floor, thighs stay on the floor, and just feel that little bit of a squeeze into your hip at the front, in the side, into the waist, the edge of the leg, and then feel it lengthen as you take the arm back. This is where you're gonna get the real lengthening across the diagonal, uh, di across diagonally, and up into the chest eventually. So feel that you're tightening into the groin, into the front of the body, make that your focus. You don't need to focus on the upper body so much now because you're focusing on that releasing of the knees, of the feet down. So both feet lift up together like they're stuck together, calves are stuck together, knees are still on the floor. If you're not feeling any squeeze in the groin, it might be that you're, you, you need to bring the knees a bit higher towards your um, elbow. So I'm gonna slide mine up a little bit closer towards my elbow. It's not particularly past 90 degrees, as some of you might, if your lower back can cope with it. And then the next time I go forward, I'm gonna be mindful of bringing my feet up because it might be a lot tighter now in the groin. And it is, so I have to watch that, it's my right hip. Changes the angle that when you open, it might be a bit different. So be, be careful of that as well. Lifting the feet up. Opening up. Make sure your calves are fully rested down as you open the elbow. As you go past the, past the side of the body with the elbow, the calves really should be down and soft into the floor. Make turning your neck part of this as well, because it will lengthen you further. So you turn to look at the elbow. Breathe into the belly as you take the elbow back into that groin area that you've just tightened into. Try not to have your hands stuck to your head. Try and allow for a bit of a movement so that the wrist can open. And turn through the upper torso. If you're watching this, you'll be seeing how much further I'm going each time. If you're not, you should be feeling some changes. If you're doing it right, do it gently. So I'm gonna make this the last two. Keep your eyes closed, stay in your body. When you've done your last couple, then rest on your side, let go. Do nothing, really check out that you're soft everywhere, your inner thigh, your lower waist, your calves, your feet. Your neck, your head, everything's soft, not switched on. 
and then you're going to take yourself over to the other side so when you've had your couple of breaths doing nothing i'm going to slide down to the other end of the mat trying to keep my head low <laughs> as low as i can because i don't want to switch my nervous system on too much more than it is and that way i can still talk to you without my back to you bring your knees up 90 degrees to your body make sure you're comfortable you're not too rotated in uh, squashed forward into the fetal position knees up to 45 to 90 degrees don't go any lower than 45 if you can help it because otherwise you won't feel that nice squeeze going in you won't get that tightness that we need before we lengthen elbows over each other hands on the side of the head soft fingers leave the lower elbow where it is twisting over now my right hip's having a little complaint so i'll make that my my marker where i don't push into anything that causes a problem in my right hip and then my right hip will start saying okay i'm okay i can lengthen a bit more i can let go i'm getting the messages again I'm not getting pain messages I'm not being over tightened or forced and then i'll get some results just opening your elbows, looking over your shoulder, already my right hip stopped complaining. It's just used to firing up and going, oh, what's going on? So it's still sending those old signals. But really it was ready to go. Breathe in as you go back, breathe out as you come forward. So keep doing this for a little while. Remember to use your neck. Remember you can take your elbow forward off the lower elbow up behind you if you want to make it a bit more diagonal, if you want to lengthen the side a bit more. And when you've felt into your shoulders, you've got a measure of how they're feeling, how the waist feeling, the lower back, the abdominal muscles, your breathing, using your breath to breathe down into your abdomen. And then you can start lifting the feet I'm going to be mindful of my lower hip when I lift to start with, just to make sure it's okay. So I might not lift as high as the other side just because, even though my left side is my good side, my right side is my trauma side. So I'm having an awareness of the lower pelvis as well. So really softening, noticing what's happening, using your breath, softening your jaw, being in control of everything, those feet shouldn't bounce down, be no bouncing in the chest area, you've done lots of lovely opening up around the front of the body, and you're making sure that you are not overdoing things. Try not to lift your legs till you've come back past the, the side, lying on the side. It's a bit too strong otherwise. Make sure your calves are fully rested down, you're not still hanging on through the front of the groin as you twist back, because that won't let you lengthen. So I'm going to do three or four more of these and then I'm going to let go, come out of the mood, rest of my side. Some of you might have stopped already, you might be finding it too strong. Sometimes our brains make a stop because they just find it all a bit too confusing, especially if it's your first time doing this. 
kind of lose the loop. <laughs> I have to be starting again. So I'm going to do my last one. And then I'm going to rest on my side, let go, do nothing. <sighs> Enjoy the quiet, enjoy the bird sounds. <laughs> it's lucky I've got quiet neighbours, isn't it? Let's come over onto our backs gently. I think what time is it? Okay, let's just do a let's do our let's do our lovely um, wash rag. I like to finish with a wash rag. It's always quite a delight, isn't it, to just get everything moving. So remember, we've done some rotation into all the different areas that we wanted to. We've done some, oh, we didn't do our groin lengthening, did we? We didn't, that's the one I missed out. I knew there was something I wanted to do. Anyway, we've done a lot of lengthening around the front of the groin into the inner thigh now with that last move. So just sending your knees gently side to side. Make sure your waist is happy. Mine's loving this because it's just done all that lovely waist work. Knees side to side, arms are out at 90 degrees to the body, turning the head opposite direction to the knees, letting them just soften down, feel into it. Make sure your shoulders are not too high to your ears. And when you're ready, bringing the arms in, just I squeeze the shoulder down, my back on the side that's opening to open my chest. That's my hand that I'm looking to. It's going back and then rotating forward as I look to the other side with closed eyes, <laughs> rotating back, sliding the shoulder blade down my shoulder. Some of you might push into the feet if you know what I'm talking about. I'll explain that another day, but otherwise just gently getting into this lovely opening waist movement, pelvis doing different things, tilting forward and back. Breathe in as you take the knees to the side. Breathe out as you come back to the middle. Have a little, maybe just adjust, we kind of end up swinging side to side, so just maybe let everything settle down before you go to the other side. When you get in the middle, let your pelvis kind of settle back down. All the muscles are softened then, they're letting go. Same with the arms. So I'm going to do two or three more of these and then we'll let go and soften into the floor. I'm making this to my last round. You can carry on if you want to. We're only going to slow down and do a body scan, so if you want to carry on doing this, then do it. You can do the body scan in your own time. It'll only be me doing the scan and then talking a little bit afterwards, so <coughs> whatever you want to do. Some people love doing the wash rag, they just carry on. Oh, my pillow's in the way. Soften your legs down, let go, do nothing if that's what you're doing. Have your couple of breaths doing nothing. And then start at the top of your head, scan down the front of your body, taking in all those areas you looked at at the start. When you've scanned the front of your body, then underneath the feet, round the back of the heels, scan the back of the body. It'll have to be a long time. So we do it. We do it slower at the start because we're really getting into our body. We're really in our body now, so we don't need to. We can scan quite quickly. The body switched onto it. The brain switched onto what's happening.
And then if you feel like just lying there doing nothing, softening into the floor, sinking away, daydreaming, falling asleep, then do that. That's up to you. I'm not watching you. I'm not making you leave. <laughs> it's your house. But as usual, I have a child to feed. <laughs> Hasn't even had breakfast yet. So I've brought my knees up. I'm going to roll onto my side, have a little rest there before I sit up. That's what you're doing. You're joining in. Then we'll say goodbye when we when we sit up. Otherwise, if you're lying down, carry on lying down. Just ignore me. Hear my voice in the distance and ignore it. When you do sit up, push up gently. Use your arms. <laughs> A little bit of that. <laughs> I'm going to come sit in front of the camera. Oh, I might switch my little comments back on if anybody wants to say anything. And if you don't, carry on lying there. Look at this date, babe. Like pink face. That was nice. Oh, I've really enjoyed doing these classes. Four classes where I actually get to do them myself. Fantastic. Bringing back my love for somatics. Not that I don't love it anyway. I don't love, and I love teaching everybody, but it's so nice to do it. <laughs> anyway, have a lovely weekend, everybody. If you watched it all the way through, well done. If you're watching it um, on YouTube or on Facebook afterwards, then great. If you had a go, if it's your first time, um let me know any comments you can ask questions i'm always here for, for any feedback especially now at the moment loads of time on my hands um and i'm spent sending you lots of love have a great weekend Mwah. bye stay safe <laughs>